How to make them read books. Hillary. Seems to work. Oh, okay, I'm ready to go. Um, well, it's cool that uh, there are not that many people here because this uh, raises your chance to actually get one of the things I brought with me. Um, I will have uh, three books. Uh, they're signed by James Bach, so it's his Buccaneer Scholar book. Um, there is a great chance you will get one of these. Um, there's not that many of you. Um, so, what I'm uh, going to talk about it is uh, mainly about coaching and about making people read. Um, I am a very um, avid reader of books and comics, and I just like books. And if you have ever, have, has anybody of you ever done that, uh, bought a new book, then just opened it and smelled on it? Have you done that? Isn't that a beautiful smell? Don't new and freshly printed books smell just beautifully? Absolutely. So, um, who am I? Um, I'm Ilari Hendrik Egerter. I work at eBay. I just started there two weeks ago. I don't have that much experience there yet. Uh, but what's important to know is uh, I'm a line manager and I have also been a line manager in my past, which means I hire people. Um, I actually only once fired somebody. I do bonuses, I define salaries, and I do all these kinds of stuff. Now let's, let's see some hands. Who of you are not uh, independent consultants? Okay. Among the ones that just raised the hands, who among you um, is not CEO? All right, so there are no CEOs here, which means that very likely you will have a, a boss somewhere sitting around. Is that correct? Okay. So what's the problem there? There is a trust problem between employees and, and managers in general. Um, just for myself, I regard myself as being a nice guy. I like to smile. And uh, I have the illusion that my directs, they primarily see me as a nice guy. Um, that's wrong. They see me as their manager first. And then maybe, yeah, he's sometimes, um, in some circumstances, a nice guy as well. Um, but first of all, there is this kind of uh, slight mistrust um, from directs to the managers, because still I have a lot of role power, and this role power I can just use that, and it's it's very difficult to actually uh, get to a stage where people fully trust the manager. Um, just imagine you um, you had a drinking binge with your friends, how much likely would it be that you tell this to your manager compared to your 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 peers? So probably you talk about that with your peers more than with your manager. So there is some sort of information which is not revealed. And this directly now links to, to coaching situations. Now, in coaching situations, uh, mostly learning is very much in the center. And um, th that, that's something you have to show your own vulnerabilities. And this is very difficult if the, the line manager, if, if I'm as a line manager and the, the coach, um, I would have to build up uh, a, a trust level that actually allows this situation. And the thing with trust, of course, is that trust cannot be enforced. I, I cannot make a contract, so you trust me now. Um, this is something I have to gain somehow. So there is different levels of trust and different sorts of trust. So this uh, image shows a, a different uh, trust than, than what I'm going to talk about. This is actually trust in one's own uh, capabilities. But the trust I talk about is more the trust between people. So how do my directs relate to me and how much do they reveal of, of uh, what they're capable of and where their weaknesses are? Um, I've heard that coaching in the United States is often used as, um, as a creator for a paper trail before letting people go, is that correct? So I've heard stories about that, that people get forced coaching by HR and then they, they, they are just let go. Um, first of all, I think it's the most important thing you as a line manager um, have to follow is, is be a role model and, and just uh, um, act consistently and so the people can actually know in what situations um, how you react. Um, I have one good example here. Let's let's see if that works. Okay. 
It doesn't. Okay, cool. Anyway, um, I have a transcription of it. So this is a, a kind of a situation where um, uh, where trust is certainly not built. So if if you um, he talked about uh, creativity and and how he, how to destroy that as well. So John Cleese, he's uh, he's from Monty Python. He's a very funny guy, and um, <clears throat> he said so. Demand urgency at all times. Use lots of fighting talk and war analogies, and establish a permanent atmosphere of stress, uh, of breathless and anxiety and crises. I think if, if as, as a manager, if I create a situation like that, then trust is uh, completely impossible. I cannot do that. Um, so go to coaching. I started to coach my people on a very regular basis. In my former job, I had uh, 13 people, um, nine direct reports, and four externals. And all the nine I coached on a regular basis. I did that once a week, so it took away a lot of my time. But I, I found that uh, very uh, useful. So the coaching sessions work like this. that. Um, Actually, everybody had to be coached, um, but they were free to choose the subject. Uh, quite interestingly, many people uh, didn't choose directly testing-related subjects. So many people actually wanted to know, how, how do I get along with this difficult person? So I just uh, walked them through uh, the DISC model and several kind of psychological personality models. Other people uh, just wanted to know how to read books. So this is why uh, the topic is, is books. I had some, some um, testers in my group that actually have never really read books, so they don't know what, what, um, what books they should read. And uh, I thought, well, let's see if I, I can somehow help them, because I, I, I read many books, and most of them I process somehow with a, with a highlighter, and I have sticky notes in there, and, and I comment on, on the pages. Um, and I thought, well, I, I can just show them how I do that. So I'm still kind of a rookie in, in, uh, in coaching directs, but uh, I enjoy it very much. So. Why, why do we coach people? I think uh, coaching is, uh, should be disconnected from, from goal setting in, an, uh, in a management by objectives environment. So I, I don't know how many of you have, have um, uh, objectives that are set at the beginning of the year. So this kind of um, things. And I think that coaching should work like that, that you coach on different things, that you're not measured uh, against your, your coaching achievements, but uh, more that the coaching achievements actually help you to, uh, to achieve the goals uh, that were set. So it's impro it improves uh, uh, the performance of people. So I'm, I, as a manager, of course, am very much interested in, in improvement of, uh, of the performance of people. Um, this is something I'm, I'm naturally interested in because I don't do the work. It's, it's my people that do the work. And my participation to, to achieving these uh, things is, is, is marginal. Um, all right, so now with reading, there is a, a very important point. Um, you can actually read a book and not take anything in. So that reading is not the same thing as, as learning uh, stuff. But I find it a very good starting point. So when you take a, a testing book and you really process it through, <clears throat> then you're at the level where you actually know about it. So you have read the book, and then you have some sort of idea. I think the best example would be a, a programming book. You can very, very on a very detailed level, read a programming book, but afterwards you cannot apply that. So there are these diff different levels of, of knowing. So there is this knowing about something. So I actually know that, um, that we're in the state of California, but I'm not from here, so I don't know that much about this state. Um, I don't know what the neighboring states are. I, I could name maybe one or two, but the, for an American, the richness of, of knowledge and experience that you have is, is, is far broader than, than I would have. And the same happens with books. So when you read a book, then you know uh, something. But still, it's a, it's a very good starting point to, to actually uh, do coaching. So what did we do? It's, uh, we had these uh, sessions uh, every week. So every one of my directs had a half an hour slot that could actually be extended to, to longer if needed. And we had that every single week. And it was my, my top priority to not skip that date. Uh, how I did it, I reserved actually one hour, and uh, the calendar entry in, in my directs uh, outlook was for just for half an hour. This created the opportunity to extend it if, if needed. Mostly, it was uh, through, through just uh, asking questions. So um, I think one needs to be very aware between the differences of, of mentoring, teaching, lecturing, and coaching. So my view on coaching is kind of being a, an, an enabler to learn stuff. I'm not the one who tells the people uh, things. There might be some direct questions, and then, of course, I answer them. 
But mostly what I, what I as a coach, I'm, I'm just enabling and I'm just pointing to things where uh, uh, people can uh, pursue further. And then of course there are kind of like, like Wade's uh, juggling session. Uh, you gave us very concrete stuff, but then you just let us do the thing. So it's, it's also you just let us experience the learning uh, ourselves. And I think this is very necessary. Just telling the people that's how it is doesn't produce anything. Um, also the own speed. What I said at the beginning, and I constantly repeated that, is that so if, um, if you say that you will do something for the next week and somehow you just didn't find time, that's fine. That's no problem at all. Um, some of my directs thought, okay, so I have to read very quickly through that book because, uh, uh, yes, so we have to advance. And I, I told them, just have your own speeds. Don't, um, don't rush through it. So I found that very important to, to actually tell the people to, um, to choose their own speed. Okay, about books. So what's, what's a book? Uh, it's a set of written, printed, or blank pages fastened along one side and in case between protective co covers. Or it's your own private cinema in your head. So that's, that's what's happening when you read something. You actually hook into the experience of, of somebody else, and it produces a lot in your head. That's uh, uh, very important. And of course, it's a very uh, good starting point to, to gain knowledge. Then um, any learning process, I think, works like this. So this is my, my uh, list. This is not taken from anywhere. So it's, you, you select something. You, uh, there's one topic that interests you. And uh, that, that's, that's what you select. Um, then you start reading about it. And this, uh, in an ideal world, should trigger a thinking process. Um, then this thinking process goes on for, for learning. And uh, then you try to uh, you understand a little bit. And then you need to apply. And then it's, it starts again from the beginning. So mostly when you apply some knowledge uh, anywhere, then this, the circle starts at the beginning again. So you start to select new stuff. You're inspired uh, to do something. OK, so now uh, the book thing. What I did with uh, my directs, actually, because I really wanted to encourage them to read books, uh, what I did, I, I had a budget for books, which was kind of uh, big enough for as many books to buy as possible. I was in a very lucky situation where I could just uh, have this budget. So I really specifically had a, a, book, budget, a, a book budget, and people knew about it. Uh, so it was very easy for them just to, to uh, go to Amazon and, and order the books. and. What was also one uh, important thing, it was theirs to keep. So uh, many companies I know, they have this kind of uh, company book library. So people can order books and they're stored in the, in the, in the library. I find it important uh, that the people can actually own the books. And for the simple reason that then you can use your highlights, you can make your own comments, you can kind of really, really use it. Uh, I think a book that, that is not commented is not, not processed uh, accordingly. And so it was there to keep, which was really nice. So they, they, they liked uh, ordering books because also most testing related books are quite expensive. And if it doesn't take any, anything away from budget, this encourages uh, reading as well. Um, then what I also did, I just grabbed all my testing books and I stored them uh, in my company. I had a bookshelf. That's not the bookshelf in my company. I transitioned. I haven't got a bookshelf now in the new company. I still have to establish that. But I had all my books there. And so people were actually um, free to take them and, and have a look. And if they liked it, they could order themselves. And then what I also did, I constantly talked about what I'm reading. I, I was just kind of trying to radiate this fascination for, for book reading. And this also just enabled people to actually also uh, start reading. OK, so we got open season. Now before start open, uh, there we go. OK. Um, if some among you are also managers, I would be very interested in getting into a conversation about uh, uh, your experiences coaching your people. So you can contact me on my web page, or uh, there is also Twitter. You can uh, talk to me. I would be very much interested in that. All right. There we go. Great. Thank you, Oliver. So we then go into open season, and we have one. Green card, Matt, or a yellow card? Let's start with Michael. The mic. You need the mic. So something that I have been personally working with, and I was going to get your uh, take on this, is do you find it effective to do a, like a book club type of approach with people that you're working with, or do you find it more appropriate to work with them on an individual basis? 
not everybody's going to want to take the same book or get the same message out of it? Or uh, is there a benefit to perhaps working through a book and actually going through and checking out your, your examples? Uh, the reason I mention this is some of the books that I've done for my own blog, I've done what are, what are referred to as extended reviews, <laughs> where I've taken a chapter and I've gone whole hog on it with uh, things I understood, things I didn't understand, things that made me scratch my head. And uh, sometimes I end up with what uh, turns out to be the longest book review in history. Mm -hmm. But it's cool because by doing that, I get to internalize it, I get to discuss it with other people, get their comments about it, and really just wring out everything from it. Mm -hmm. What are your experiences? And do you follow up with those? If you give a book to somebody, how do you follow up with them to see what they've actually gotten out of it? Mm -hmm. Well. Um, First, the, the, the book club idea um, is kind of my, my view on a book club is kind of uh, elderly ladies sitting together and reading love stories. So but that's, I, I don't know, this might be just the wrong image. Um, I haven't done book clubs. What, what I did, there were um, two people that actually um, selected the same book and I had them interchange their ideas of what they were learning out of the book. Uh, my follow up, following up on, on what they were learning was actually in the, in the coaching session itself. So uh, they were actually um, telling me what they read. So they gave a short presentation on, on the chapter they were reading. Mostly it worked like this, that they said, okay, until next week, I probably read the next two chapters. And then in the coaching session, they, they, they told me things about what's, what's in the book. And then uh, if I re ha have read the book myself, then I took my notes and, and I, I just asked some questions. And they, they walked me through the chapter they have just read. And um, and then mostly what what often happened also was that these people then noticed that oh, I have to reread that that's something I haven't quite caught, uh, so that's what I did. But book club, uh, no, we haven't done that. Yeah. Okay, next thread, Matt. Yeah, just to sort of um, amplify something that you said, which I think is really <clears throat> I agree with and it's really important. You said uh, let them own the book, right? So. Uh, a lot of companies that I've worked with over the years, uh, going, you know, going back to being an employee even, would say things like, the company is going to buy the book, and we'll buy it for you, but you need to remember the company owns it, and it needs to go in our, our library. <clears throat> and you, you, know, you come back five years later, and these shelves full of books that no one reads that are just sort of collecting dust that are out of date, and um, there's no real value captured there. Now, you think about the value in terms of retention of an employee when you say, if you're going to read this on your own time, we'll buy it for you. Don't worry, we'll expense it. You know, 100 bucks a year, not much money, right? But the value the company captures to the person, and then the person has this sort of personal, and they can, they can give it to the library, they can recycle it or whatever. Um, the book is going to be happier, right? The book is going to have a better life. So if you're having that conversation with your executives and you're like, well, I'll just give in. The company will buy it, but, but the company will own it. Fine, I'll give in on that so the guy gets it. No, that one might be worth fighting for. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, with books, it's, it's like with pets. They need an owner. So if, if the, the company is not an owner, uh, I find this, this mindset ridiculous. Um, kind of th this is $100 a year, and if you compare that to, to all the salaries, and then if you also compare that to the to the uh, people getting better at what they do and what the company gains out of that, this is a very, very uh, high return um, return on investment. Um, yeah, it's a high value return on, on investment. So I, I, I don't I don't understand that. This is kind of a, a book. It's kind of thirty dollars or so, and and if a company cannot afford that, that's a little bit strange. I agree with that. Okay, no follow-ups. Any so new threats or comments? Um, there are books here. <laughs> now, one thing, uh, Sabina gets one because she's new in testing. Uh, so uh, I want to encourage that. Um, OK, so then uh, one second. The other two books, um, I thought about how would I distribute them. Now, um, th the first two can do come and show me this here, like that. And that open like that. If you can do that, you get the other two books. <laughs> And we can do that off to the side, maybe? How to make them read books. Yeah.